This is Robert Monroe, and here's another track from our Explorer Files. We have coded this one TCA. He is a physicist by profession and is one of our older team members. Older, that is, in terms of number of sessions. Much of his work with us quite naturally falls into exploration that might relate to our space-time technology. Here's an example. He is already well into Focus 12 and reporting. I've gotten all kinds of things on it, and I've been trying to sort them and put it into some kind of uh, rational uh, order. But first, before I start, I was corrected, and the answer to the previous question was, uh, or the correction I got was, we didn't say that we didn't know anything about a 15 megahertz signal. We simply said that it was of no consequence to you. So they claim they're not necessarily ignorant, but that it's nothing really to concern ourselves with. It's not doing anything to us or with us or for us, or it's passive, I expect as far as its interaction uh, with us, whatever its intent, intended interaction might be. Anyway, back to the other question. First of all, I had the impression that um, the physical matter reality and as much of, of uh, as much of, I guess, what is normally called reality, um, not only physical matter, but also uh, a certain amount of our uh, daydreaming and imaginative, intuitive qualities, are part of a sort of like a, a large, um, daydream or thought from a, a higher consciousness. And just as we can daydream and invent characters and situations, we are characters in a situation that was invented or dreamt, so to speak, um, in this case, though, quite consciously dreamt by a um, more advanced sort of consciousness. And the part that we have to play in this uh, uh, daydream is one of uh, education, one of learning and bettering ourselves, striving to become more. Now, I'm not clear why this, uh, this, uh, this kind of over-consciousness or over-soul um, is having this daydream, but I have the feeling that it's for its own education. It, it learns as we learn. Anyway, uh, we were, or we have such limited consciousness to begin with, because if you're going to set up a situation um, where you expect certain processes to happen, uh, these processes, of course, are our education, our learning, you don't set up the most complex and involved uh, experiment or situation. You set up a simpler one uh, or as, as simple a one as you can f produce that still uh, has the qualities to get the results that you want. And this is the reason that we are uh, seemingly of such limited consciousness. But the reason that we have an option to develop our consciousness more fully is part of the 
Um, this, sort of the the uh, the experiment itself is such that we are to learn and grow and evolve and become and learn through experience and doing and as closer or as as closely as we can come to understanding and um, um, being a part of or understanding our part of our creator our, our over soul daydreamer if you like then um, sort of the more power to us the more of that we can understand and the more uh, learning that we've acquired so it's not really well I take it back it's not so much that we are driven to expand our awareness or that we should be other than it's available and being available uh, makes it uh, a direction in which we can evolve if we so choose that's a little jumbled even to myself but um, that's the way it's coming out very good then let's move to another area and switch into another area in this physical matter of time and space what other energies are available to us that we can use to replace what we now use such as fossil fuels and electricity what other energy can we use that will replace these if we so desire and so need my mind as you were still speaking was the uh, static uh, electromagnetic field or the static electric field I should say that um, surrounds the earth and also uh, I was just told the magnetic the earth's magnetic field as well as its static electric field have enormous amounts of energy how can we tap these how can we utilize these seems like it I got the picture it uh, seems almost facetious to me in a sense that was making a very large um, electric motor with the uh, earth as the central uh, permanent magnet and a very large uh, coil of of uh, a big solenoid or a big coil of wire surrounding the earth uh, large enough to be uh, uh, you know in space not under uh, uh, gravitational you know a coil that would be um, in space rather than in the atmosphere or ionosphere or anything rotating uh, slowly about the earth using the magnetic field to cut the flux lines and create the the uh, electric potential it's just a big gold dumb uh, motor except the very big one with the earth as a permanent magnet now, I don't know whether that was given to me as uh, as a joke or what but I got a very clear picture of it ask how we can reduce this down to a level that we can use it uh, in uh, our earth environment in our backyard so to speak you can't reduce a, uh, a motor made up of the earth as its uh, permanent magnet into your backyard but uh, I saw that there are techniques using the um, earth's electrostatic field that are not so grandiose um, I see a bunch of 
long, thin cylinders uh, oriented uh, uh, well, with the long axis up and down oriented normally to the Earth's surface. Uh, these cylinders aren't that large. We're not talking about space things. We're talking maybe uh, oh, a few hundred feet. Um, if they're a few hundred feet tall, then they must be uh, oh, six, eight feet in diameter. They seem to be light, uh, almost like a, a translucent um, plexiglass is what they appear to be. Uh, sort of like a big gigantic fluorescent light bulb, I guess is the best. 100 foot tall fluorescent light bulb of about the same uh, relative dimensions of length to diameter that a fluorescent light bulb has and these things seem to glow Now I don't know what's in them but the uh, electric field gradient through these objects normal to the earth's surface seems to uh, create some sort of energy that can be tapped off of this uh, uh, somewhere in the middle of it, I'm not sure, or toward the bottom. I'm getting these things mostly visually. It has something to do with materials. Um, I don't know whether they're solid or hollow with gas in them, but it's a materials type thing that uh, I don't know whether we have the material yet, whether it's been you know, discovered or invented or whatever. But it I'm just being shown this as a as a possibility, a way that it that it can be done. Very good. We have heard talk or mentioned in various places of a motor that will be the size that could fit in, uh, in an automobile, for example, that operates on some magnetic principle. What about this? Answer, but the answer was sure, but that takes uh, superconducting uh, uh, materials or superconducting uh, magnets that. Uh, right now can only or you can only produce with uh, cooling down to the temperatures of uh, four degrees Kelvin which is about liquid uh, helium and that uh, because of the requirement of superconducting uh, uh, metals coils that uh, and because of the cooling requirement to keep these coils in a superconducting state that it's not uh, practical now or that it doesn't seem practical with our present technology I should say that not that it will never be practical perhaps there are ways of uh, producing uh, superconducting phenomena uh, without the uh, necessity to get it down to uh, temperatures of liquid uh, helium. No, I, I don't know anything about that. I don't know of any such engine or whatever, it, or motor. It's just that was what I was told that the superconducting problem and the low temperatures was the, was the uh, crunch as far as our technology went. seem to be electromagnetic uh, or magnetic is another form of energy. Is this a form of energy we can apply here in this reality? Energy in this reality um, 
as it affects the awareness. Um, as opposed to as it affects uh, physical matter. Now let me try to uh, straighten that out. This energy that we're dealing with now is not electromagnetic, uh, true. It's not uh, physical in the sense of your physical energies, but It can be used and utilized to um, change or vary the awareness, and the awareness can be used to change or modify the physical environment. But it's mm, it's not so much that you're using this energy to manipulate physical structure as it is that you can use this energy to manipulate your uh, awareness of physical structure. Uh, for example, you can use this energy to change your awareness of cold such that you are no longer cold, such that you are warm. Rather than heat the house, heat the man. Uh, the man can heat himself by becoming unaware of of cold. So it's in that sense that this energy can be used to moderate your environment by changing uh, the impact of the environment on the individual rather than actually uh, using the energy to manipulate matter. Now this is a very fine distinction. If you are not cold, you are not cold because you no longer are aware or sense that you're cold or because your room is heated. Uh, it seems really to make very little difference in the end. Then, uh, what of uh, some of the uh, people who have made, uh, have come into public view who apparently are using this kind of energy, such as a, a Yuri Geller, for example. Is he using this kind of energy to affect matter? He is using a, another kind of energy to affect matter. Uh, the last answer was specific to the energy that we were using to communicate. Um, the... I'm not quite clear. The energy that Yuri Geller uses to affect the matter is somehow different and not the same as the thought transfer, the information transfer, the energy involved in inf energy involved in information transfer that we're using in this uh, communication. Um, I had a a inclination that that uh, there were almost like uh, others or a third party involved in the energy that Yuri Geller was utilizing. That this was not necessarily uh, available to um, no, that's not right. I was going to say it's not available to everyone. Um, it's not really that it's not available to anyone. It's just that uh, there's like some constructive interference as far as Yuri is concerned that helps him direct or use this energy. And that's what makes this energy seem to be accessible to him. I, I guess one would say he's being helped. He's not uh, doing this all on his uh, his own. Such energy available to us. 
Yes, there's no prohibition uh, that would disallow us from uh, utilizing it. says you need to get the people to help you out. You need to get the, the uh, I don't know, whoever they are to uh, uh, be cooperative. And the obvious next question after this, well, how do we go about that? That's correct. To uh, begin to start doing it uh, just as we began the communications with some uh, in the very beginning were full of uh, stumblings and uncertainties and gradually became uh, established uh, more securely and better that um, if we begin trying to apply uh, energy in, in the same type of manifestations as uh, Yuri Geller exhibits that if we begin trying to apply uh, energy in, in the same type of manifestations as uh, Yuri Geller exhibits that that will give um, these people or entities a place to start and that it will develop. And we should not expect immediate success, but just to keep working on it and uh, it will come. That they're not... Uh, uh, tied to uh, your Geller say in any specific you know sense that that uh, they're his and he's theirs and that they can't do anything else so it's not like it's just a local phenomenon that he can exercise uh, they generally uh, will work where the interest is I don't I don't really see that there's the problem seems to be communications. I don't really get the feeling that, uh, well, I suppose we perhaps could establish communications with these uh, people, same kind of communications that we have now. There for a while I just didn't feel that. It seemed like they were just kind of incommunicado, but uh, then I got a feeling to the contrary or information to the contrary. Who are they? I don't know. I just get a, a they. They're a, they're a somebody else. Uh, I don't necessarily make them out to be... Um, yeah, you know anything particularly supernatural or or strange or holy or anything like that? They just seem to be a um, sort of like a, another organization, just as we've seen organized uh, helpers and workers that have worked with us in our communicating and and uh, traveling and information. Uh, they're like a uh, a separate. Uh, task force, so to speak, uh, a different group that uh, utilizes this energy primarily, or this this uh, mind-to-matter energy um, as a primary tool rather than the uh, communication uh, type energy. And then there's no 
specific step that we could do to establish contact with that other organization of days? Well, I feel that, yeah, there is. I don't know just what it is, but it's like they're out there, and it's like they're not unwilling. Uh, I suspect our step is desire. We wish to and uh, begin working at, and they'll be in touch. You know, like many of the other things, it's a matter of us putting forth the effort and having the desire that finally brings results. Is not this kind of energy uh, a means of manipulating physical matter? Uh, yes, it is. It, uh, I almost, uh, well, I do. I get the feeling, or I get the information that it's, what you're doing is, uh, is really getting the cooperation of the physical object itself to change its form. So the spoon realters its uh, form, not because forces and pressures or temperatures have forced it to a new form, but rather it is an interaction between the material itself and the and the uh, this energy, which is. Uh, different than thought energy, but focused and controlled by the mind. It's almost a cooperative thing. It's not that the metal is pushed into bending, but the metal sort of uh, bends itself. It's almost as if the metal becomes a servant or obeys the uh, desire of the individual and restructures itself. should offer some interesting opportunities, should it not? It certainly should. Very good. I think that we'll then let you begin to move back now. You will notice that TCA has the same strained pattern of speech that is typical of the explorer mode. He is unable to reach back and use his vocal cords while in an out-of-body state, as ROMC is able to do. However, he can communicate with a third non-physical party while in Focus 12, as you have heard, still within the physical. At a later period, he began a process of momentary return to his physical body so that he could report on his activities in the out-of-body state. Here is one of such reports. GSR 20 points over normal. Back into regular 12. Had two encounters. The first with an unseen intelligence who replied to a general query for communications sort of a, I'll talk to you. But it was obvious that he, or I guess I say he, I got the feeling of a he, wanted to listen, like, okay, you know, what do you want to talk about? And as I tried to put the burden on him or it for some information about itself, about its environment. It got very uh, displeased and with a very kind of loud and disgusting noise, it left, I got the feeling angry for being bothered. Sort of like bumping into a busy New York pedestrian. 
The second was much more interesting. The second communication, uh, I didn't just get an intelligence, but got a complete visual image. F female, late 30s. And she was very uh, pleased to communicate offered to show me around and showed me a lot of the facility. I don't really know what else to call it that she was in. Some of the rooms, some of the things, none of which I understood. One thing in particular she thought I had the feeling was very impressive. And we walked up to this like wall and two big doors swung open. And there was nothing there that seemed impressive at all. But she thought that these markings and irregularities of the surface were quite something. I don't know why. I didn't relate to it at all. She then took me to several other rooms and places, none of which could I relate to. I, I asked her if she was in any way familiar with my, uh, with physical matter existence as I knew it. And she was not familiar with that and asked me to explain. That was very difficult. The explanation uh, was pretty much impossible. I didn't really know how to explain physical matter. So I asked for if it was all right if I came back and that I would wanted to leave to report in. She seemed a little dismayed that I was taking off after having just gotten part way through the tour. But she says, all right and I came back to report. That brings us up to the present moment. Very good. In your return, or more of communications with her, go back and try and understand the type of energy in the world that uh, type of basic knowledge of what we might label this is. Okay. Three minute time left. I thought I'd better report before I forgot much of what went on. Reestablished contact with same female. She was quite surprised that I indeed did return. Pleased. At first, I began to wonder what did this intelligence really look like to itself? Was I just imposing my own image of female human, humanoid form? And we discussed this realizing that I was creating this image of her and could not really tell whether this was her own image of herself or not. She likewise was creating an image of me in a likeness to which she was familiar.
and whether or not these likenesses were similar, mine and hers, there was no way to tell. So we left that question. Then I got uh, an itch of some intensity began on my neck, and I tried to explain that I existed in another reality besides the one I was sharing with her, and that I had a physical body elsewhere, and that that physical body had an itch on its neck and was disturbing the focus of my attention. And that's why I seem to be fading in and out as my attention wavered. She seemed to think that was quite incredible. I don't believe she believed me at all. She just kind of ignored that statement like one might ignore somebody who says an irrational thing. I asked her about her physics. She took me to another place where there was another entity, this one male, and there was a writing surface, much like a blackboard, but not a blackboard, whereupon he attempted to explain the nature of things there. Uh, we had no success at all with his writing. The marks he was making on this surface, uh, this blackboard, were totally unintelligible to me, and we after a few efforts, gave up, tried to go to pictures. All the time we could communicate telepathically. Uh, pictures were okay. He drew some pictures. And from the telepathic exchange, I felt that their science Indeed, their concept of their existence and of reality was in many ways similar to our own in that they were fixed in that reality. They could not travel out of it as I had traveled out of physical matter reality into theirs. They seemed to believe that they were fixed in their reality and couldn't really travel out of it. I don't know whether they even believed that there was any other reality other than their own. They had a physical science much as we do in that the objects in their reality obeyed very specific uh, laws. I tried to see if any of their laws were similar to ours, such as gravitation. It was very difficult to tell. I couldn't separate what was there. Well, I couldn't find out what their concept of their reality was. All I could do was translate into my own concepts, meaning I did not see them floating around in air, but whether that was because they experience a thing called gravity like we do, or whether that was a function of my own experience visualizing humanoids not floating in the air, I could not tell. But I did feel that they had a, a basic physical science that ruled the uh, objects of their reality. They didn't move things around by thought processes or anything uh, like that. It seemed sort of like an Earth type physical reality 
to them, although I didn't, I don't recognize many of their devices and structures seem very foreign, but they seem to be fixed and isolated within those devices and structures. Somehow I appear to them as one of their own kind. Whether that's humanoid or not, I don't know. Maybe I should have tried to find out where they think I came from or who they think I might be. And there you have a report from TCA, who also has the quality so necessary in our explorations. Calm serenity, whatever the environment or adventure. We would appreciate any comments, opinions, or perceptions you may have on these explorations we are sharing with you. Simply write them to me in care of the Institute. And this is the end of this particular Explorer Tape.